Hi, I'm B from Next Mechanics, and in today's video, we're going to be making a cat skull. So I've done a lot of clay sculptures over the last year. I've done the Cyber Bunny, Chewbonka, the Minecraft trains, the frogs, but I've never done anything that was attempted to be properly realistic. Then one of my family requested that I make a cat skull as a birthday present, test my skills, see just how good I can get, and I figured, why not? So ironically, even though we're making a skull, we still need a skeleton for our skeleton. <laughs> to do that, I'm gonna use just tin foil. Tin foil is metal, so it's strong. When you wrinkle it up, it's got like a tooth, so it will grip the clay better, and it's also cheaper. Next, it's time for our clay of choice. Now, for me personally, I really like using air dry clay. You can use Sculpey and stuff like that that's baked, it's probably better, but for me, I like air dry clay because it's relatively soft when it's fresh, and if it gets harder, you can just add water to it and it softens it right up. So I started off by doing the top half of the skull. Now, the only problem here is that I want it to be hollow, like an actual skull. And what that means is that it's kind of being a bit fragile at first. Even though the tin foil is metal, it still wiggles around, right? So I'm trying to just bulk out the main bits, get that done. So doing the upper skull, making sure that the eye sockets were nice and defined, making the back of the cranium and all of that sort of stuff, making a start in the teeth as well. Teeth are going to be great fun. And slowly but surely, this blob of foil and clay started looking like something. With the upper half mostly there, I decided to move on to the lower jaw. And the lower jaw was a little bit more tricky because it kept wanting to break. I should have packed the tin foil a bit tighter so it didn't wiggle around as much, but because it could wiggle when it did, it would either deform the clay or crack it when it got hard. We'll fix that later on. For now, we just need the basic shape done. It took me a few days using my fancy new metal tools, as well as a mixture of my old plastic ones. But eventually, we had something that looked vaguely about right. Now, I wasn't fully happy with it at first. It was close, but it wasn't quite right. So, I just kept adding clay on top of the pre-existing clay. If you make sure to score the hardened clay first with a knife, some sandpaper, and then add the new clay, it grips a lot better. You give it something for the clay to actually dig into, and it all just sort of merges as to one solid piece. Now, I'm not too fussed about the texture on this. Normally with my models, I either do some sort of fur texture to kind of hide the imperfections, or I'll try and smooth it out of the water and stuff like that. But because I'm doing it as a skull and it's bony, having the slightly messed up texture is actually really useful. Because when I go to paint it later, I can do the dry brushing and it's going to have a lovely texture. The final step for the skull was once I got it about how I wanted, I used wood filler to fill in the cracks. Air dry clay is brittle, it likes to crack when it dries, so using wood filler is just going to be a lot stronger. Now before we move on to painting, I want to make it a base. Better yet, I want to make it a base that lights up. I've made the skull hollow, if I just have a light at the bottom, it's gonna look so cool. To make the base, I used some of my metal rings. I have these from a local craft store and they're super useful for base building. So I cut a few of those circles out just on standard cardboard. Then I cut a strip of thinner cardboard, more like a cereal box, and hot glued that all around the edges, thus making it have a nice clean smooth edge. Once I got the cardboard stuff done, it was time to cut out the slot for the LED. I'm just using a standard like finger LED or whatever it's called from my local dollar store. They're super great. You literally, it's just one switch. You turn the LED on, turn the LED off. Super easy. I kind of didn't think about the fact that I'm going to need to swap the batteries out later on. That's fine. We don't need to have it on all the time. So I just hot glued it straight in place once I cut out a slot for it. And then I got to work giving it some really cool texture. See, I used more air dry clay on top building up a sort of mountain or mound or whatever, and then in the center of that, I made sure that it was hollowed out for the LED, but then on the lip, I could just squish my pre-hardened skull into it, giving it a nice indent so the skull would definitely fit. Once that was done, I got to work making it have a cool sort of rock texture. It's a basic diorama, but it works nicely. All I did is I used some pre-hardened bits of air dry clay. For some reason, whenever I do my sculptures, I always get these little bits that flake off and they always sort of go hard and they're not really usable. So instead of wasting it, I collect them in a little tub and then at times like these where I could just get that tub out, press the hardened bits of clay into the soft clay and it gives it a really cool rocky texture. Now that the base is done, it's time for painting. Painting the skull was a little bit tricky. 
See, most people think it's a skull and just paint it white. But me? No, I'm thinking of fun texturing stuff. So what I'm actually gonna do is paint it black. Why are you gonna paint it black? Well, you see, if I paint it black, that means that it's all gonna be one consistent color. I don't have to worry about the wood filler that's slightly yellowy, discoloring it, making it harder, needs to add more layers. And if I dry brush the white on, which is where you wipe most of the paint off and then just sort of slap it on the tops of the model, then all of the recesses are gonna be left black or at least gray, and it's gonna give it a really cool texture. This worked in theory. The only problem is I got impatient and tried sponging instead of dry brushing, which sort of blops the paint on, which meant that it got brighter quicker, but it also meant that it got dirtier quicker. My sponges for some reason decided to pick up every loose cat hair and bit of dust on my desk and just stick it to the model. And it took me about three resets of painting it all black and starting over again before I realized, maybe if I just go slow and just do dry brushing, maybe it'll turn out good. And it did. It did take a lot of coats. White over black, it's obviously going to be tricky. But in the end, it was well worth it. The base, on the other hand, was a little bit easier. I started off again with a base black coat, except this time I mixed it up with some PVA glue. The idea being that it will help make sure that any of the little bits of rocks that want to come off the soft clay, because it dries, it's a little bit funky. It'll get glued into the base properly, so it's all one solid piece. Once I did that, I dry brushed white over the top very, very lightly, adding bits of grey and white highlights. I say grey because the white mixes with the black sometimes and it adds a more natural blend. And because the light I'm using is blue, I also dry brushed tiny, tiny bits of blue on the edges, just to give it that sort of subtle hint. And after all that, I think we're done. That's pretty cool, right? Like, that's one of my more realistic builds. I'm pretty impressed with how good I got, actually. Now, I did realize once I'd finished it that my references were more off of, like, saber-toothed cats, big cats, not exactly your, uh, your house cat, but it's still recognizable for what it is, right? I love the way it glows in pitch black. Just that ominous teeth and the eye sockets just glowing. It's really cool. It's one of the most fun props I've made. And it's relatively simple to do as well. You just need a lot of reference material. So I hope you enjoyed the video. It was pretty fun doing something so different to what I normally make. So let me know down in the comments. Do you want me to do more creepy things? I'd love to do something funky for Halloween. Otherwise, I'll catch you next week. Farewell.